Hello there, Anxious Cynic back again, continuing our beginner's guide in Minimator. So today we're going to show how to use the automatic walk cycle feature in Minimator. And it's pretty simple, and uh, we're just going to cover basically how to make your character begin walking. So what I'm going to do first is back Steve up a little bit. He's a little bit too close to the edge there, so let's go ahead and just bring him on over here. Something like so. And all we have to do in order to use this feature is set two keyframes for the root of the character here. So if you have like say the character parented to a folder like we showed in the last tutorial or anything like that, then you can't use that. You have to use the root of the actual character. You know, the actual Steve here in our library, this guy here, when you bring it over here, this is the root of his character, Steve. Or if we bring in a new character, let's go ahead and just bring in a skeleton then it has to be this right here, the very like root of all the parts of the character. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And uh, yeah, so this is what you have to set the keyframes for. So just try to keep that in mind anytime you're animating something like this. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to go to, let's say, frame 100. Let's zoom in a little bit on our timeline here. There we go. So now that we've got two keyframes here, all I'm going to do is highlight this one by double clicking on it. And then you'll see that we get these options over here. If I go ahead and expand that out, remember if you are missing these, like I covered in the first part, all you gotta do is just drag that out and you'll be good to go, bad. All right, so you have two options here. You have the walking animation and you have running animation. So for this example, we're just gonna go ahead with the walking animation. All I have to do is click on that button, boop, and then you'll see all these keyframes here show up and Steve begins to walk when we play it. So you just do like that and there you go. That's how you get the automatic walk cycle in your scene, like good to go. All you gotta do is just create those two keyframes. You select the first one by double clicking, etc. So that's the walk one. Let's go ahead and just show the run real quick. Let me undo. There we go. Now we are reset. And again, we have two keyframes, one here and one here. And that's let's just say that's where we want things to go. You may have to finagle with it. Uh, we're gonna show how to move it in a moment here, but that's just kind of how you use that feature. So we've got that going. We're going to go ahead and double click on this to highlight it. You'll see those buttons become available now. I'm just going to click on the run cycle this time. Boop. And then you'll see there's a lot more keyframes because this is a faster cycle. So there it goes. Steve goes into that pose and starts going. So what we want to do is actually make a move. But you'll notice one problem we're having here. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. These keyframes start like right after this. So when I hit play, he just immediately like goes down into it, like right between these two keyframes, boop, just like so. So if you wanted that to be a slower process, then what you can do is just click on all these, drag it over like so, zoom in and drag over a little bit, and we can drag this out like that. And then when he goes into it, it'll be a little bit slower. It's not like him just popping into the sudden run there. All right. So what I can do, I can actually move this around if I want to. Like that's going to determine how fast he goes, how, how far he moves and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, what I want to do, I'm going to set another keyframe over here. Let me go ahead and zoom in on the timeline. I'm just going to drag around to kind of see how Steve is moving. Like so. So we're going to kind of cover a couple of topics here on how to make your character walk. Because what I've done is I've dragged this first part out, so that makes the timing a little bit different for this part. So that's what we're going to have to finagle with. But let's go ahead and just kind of start with this little bit. So I've got a couple of walk cycle tutorials that I've made in the past. So I recommend you check those out if some of this stuff is brand new to you. Because I cover some little details here of what I'm doing and how it makes sense and stuff. Uh, one thing you'll notice, he's going to be kind of floating because I'm not going to fix this little issue with him on the path versus the grass. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So what we got here is this movement where his leg kind of goes back. And I've made that, like I said, slower than it initially was. So what I want to do is actually try to kind of figure out where his foot lines up with the pixels on the ground, which is basically halfway between these pixels. So what I'm going to do is with his root, I'm going to click on it and then drag it over to where it kind of lines up. Basically his toe is about the same. So you'll see when I drag over this, he doesn't move as far as he will once we get this going. So anyway, that kind of doesn't make sense. I'm jumping ahead of myself, I apologize. But anyway, so we basically just want that to look smooth. So you can see there, he kind of moves in synchronization with his little rev up there as he's beginning to go into the run. So what we want to do now is take this last keyframe. You don't have to highlight it like that, but that's just what I did. So uh, basically, we're just going to move him. We're just going to take him and drag him over here. So we're just going to play this here and see how he moves. 
All right, so you can see there that he's moving quite a bit more than you would want him to for how far he's going. Technically, we need him to be going much faster in order for that to look right. So there's two different ways we can do this. It depends on how far you want him to go. If I know I want him to go further, then I can just make him go further and uh, just drag this out. The more he moves, then the more, you know, the faster that'll be. So as you can see there, that actually looks a little better. But of course, he's over running over the, the, the sky there. Basically, he's running over air, not the sky. Anyway, so alternatively, if we don't want him running over the sky, as I said, uh, then uh, we can actually just drag this in. So let's go ahead and undo that movement that we did there. So he's only gonna be running here. And as you can see, that's not working out too well. But what if we want him to just end right there? We don't want him to uh, keep going. So what I can do is drag this keyframe in. And that's going to mean that he's going to move from point A to point B faster. And uh, then we can just trim the walk cycle or the run cycle that we have here. So let me go ahead and do like this. And you'll see these moving a good bit faster. That's actually a speed that we would probably want to go with right there. But just in case, you know, you can kind of finagle with it, drag it around see how fast you want things to go. And we're just gonna bring that right on back. So that's basically what you would do. You can just mess with the timing and kind of get Steve to move the way you want to. Sorry if I'm zooming out a little bit too far there. There you go, like so. And all you gotta do then, we're just gonna take all these keyframes except for the last one. Just gonna drag over those that accidentally selected that one. We don't want that. And I'm just gonna hit the delete key and then we're gonna highlight this one and bring it right over here like so. And we're gonna see what that looks like. There you go, man. Let's go ahead and uh, bring our camera over here so we can see a little bit better. There you go, man. Steve moves. You can adjust the speed, how fast you want him to move, all that good stuff. And uh, that's how you use the automatic walk cycle and the automatic run cycle. That's how you can make him move actually with it and how to adjust the speed at which he's moving and things like that. You can, of course, slow these run cycles and walk cycles down or speed them up by grabbing these keyframes and dragging them closer together and things like that, like we covered in previous tutorials. But that's basically how you would get that to work. Hope that was helpful. I hope you understood it. There was a little bit of clunkiness there. I apologize if, uh, you know, I kind of stumbled over some things. But hopefully you get the idea. Hope this was helpful and I hope you learned something. Let's go ahead and have Steve kind of uh, running a marathon here. There we go. Comes out there and stops and that's good enough for me. So there you go, guys. That's how you can make him walk and run automatically without having to animate that stuff yourself. But come back next time where we show how to make an actual walk cycle from scratch and then save those keyframes. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Take one of the in today. Share it with your friends, your family, and your pets. And I will see you guys in the next video.